Welcome back. It's the 13 nights of Halloween. Hi everybody, welcome to another night of the 13 nights of Halloween. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And uh, is this one a rerun? Uh, sort of. Okay. The last one really wasn't. It turned out to not be a rerun. We talked about all new stuff. And so this time around, it's yeah. going to be a rerun. We're going to repeat the exact stories that we already told. But this time around, it's going to be actually recorded. That's the difference. Okay, so what we talked about last time that you didn't hear. And, and you know what? The same amount of people are probably going to hear this episode, too. But oh well. It's out there if you want to listen to it. We had talked about... Uh, we, the last episode was Intro to Spookiness. And we didn't really talk about spookiness much. So maybe we'll have to come up with a new... This will be uh, the, the second the, the second class. You know, the, the 200 level class. This is two, it, Spookiness 201. <laughs> okay, Spookiness 201. That's not bad. <laughs> but I was just going to talk to you a little bit about being scared. About the scariness of... Well, things, things that, that are scary and, uh, you know, Halloween is sort of a celebration of that. We, we talked last year about the origins of Halloween and the superstitions of, you know, All Hallows Eve and, and you know, the night when evil is freed to, to walk among us and, you know, just commemorating that or, or uh, trying to scare away evil and and all that, and as that has so, slowly gone away, it's become sort of just a celebration of things that are scary, things that are are uh, disturbing. Thing, you know, that, again, whistling past the graveyard. We all are going to die. We know it's inevitable. We've all known people that have died. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know that it's a, a coincidence that Day of the Dead follows Halloween. You know, just these these things. And uh, Alfred Hitchcock once said that people love to be scared when they know they're actually safe. I think it was really safe, he said. But uh, And so I thought we would talk a little bit about that. It's no fun to be scared when your life is actually in danger, when something bad could actually happen to you. When you're hiking and you slip and fall and you nearly go over, that's no fun. Or, you know, falling asleep while driving or, or whatever it is. You know, somebody appearing in your room at the foot of your bed. An old lady appearing at the foot of your bed. An your old lady room. with just like an enormous bronze dildo. These are not things <laughs> that we want to have happen. And they you wouldn't talk about them afterward in a, you know, oh, oh that was so cool, uh, you know, kind of way. But a, a, a roller coaster or, you know, a scary movie or, you know, a prank that you pull on somebody else where you're uh, frightened and then you're just like, well, <laughs> and you immediately laugh because there is no danger but for the moment there, your caveman brain, your hind brain thought you were in danger, thought thought that it was, it has come down and all that. And so I thought we would talk about that. Do you, do you, do you not, do you get any joy from being scared? Yeah, I, I suppose so. I, I like scary movies and stuff like that. I haven't seen a lot of them. It's not like a, a I'm not like you. I guess I didn't. It didn't become a, a real thing for me, if you know what I'm saying. It's not like a a hobby or a, something that I chase after. But, but I enjoy you it. You didn't watch just hours and hours and hours of horror movies on a weekend in high school? No, I was having sex in high school. <sighs> Whoa, that's a callback from back in the days, folks. We haven't done that one in a long time, but that's okay. That's right. Everything we're, old is new again. We're going to bring back some memories with this next track. Yes. It's the oldies is, here on the Doom Steve 13 Nights of Halloween. That's right. Saturdays in the Park by Chicago coming up next. Day. To these messages. Well, you have read your share of like scary books, of horror books. I and have, all that yeah. Stuff. And I remember you talking about the dark half. And yeah. And reading the dark half and being scared. And, and I, I read the dark half when it first came out. And yeah, there was a moment I didn't want to go to sleep. And it was that, it was that moment very, very early in the story where George Stark, I think, is the villain. He has struck. He has killed somebody in just an awful way. Uh, but, but I just remember being afraid to go to sleep, you know, when I got to the end of that chapter or whatever. And it's like, ah. Oh. But you but you know that that dude is, isn't real, you know, that there's nobody actually there or whatever. You know what I mean? It's just it's you're afraid but it's an irrational fear. It's it's uh, the fear that that you've done to yourself. 
Yeah, you know something that's really funny? Speaking of Stephen King, and I'm not sure exactly when he said this, but I, I want to say it was one of those author's notes to maybe like a, one of his stories or one of his collections or something like that. And he was talking about how everybody knows that, you know, there's not, there's not a monster in your closet. There's not a monster under your bed. But all the same you don't leave your arm hanging over the side of the bed when you go to sleep. And this is a really funny thing. At the time that I read this, I always left my arm hanging over the bed. You did? I used to do that all the time. I, I would always, like, hang my leg or my arm over the side of the bed. But once I read this, I couldn't do it anymore. I'd put my arm over the side of the bed and leave it hanging down there, and then I was just like, uh, uh, and I would pull it back up just <laughs> because he brought that to my attention. You know what I mean? I'll just roll back over this way, and he would be so pleased to hear you say that. <laughs> you know that he would. If you've ever seen King like talk at a library or at a school or whatever, he always ends his lecture, his speech, or whatever the same way. And he tells people, you know, hey, drive safely, you know, keep the speed limit or whatever. But keep in mind as you're walking to your car, you know, it's dark and, uh, and you know, you don't know what has happened while you've been in here safe listening to me. But there's probably not somebody who <laughs> opened your door and climbed in the back seat and in this, is, is lurking there and they're in the shadows. There's probably nobody there, but, but, but there may be. And so maybe you should check before you get in the car. To see, and anyway, he does this with just such, to such delight, like you know, like he's trying to frighten a child. I've seen him do it a bunch of different ways, and he twi changes it around each time. But uh -huh. oh, he just gets so much joy, and you hear the audience like titter and like you know, oh, yeah, kind of thing. I'm going to be seeing that on the drive home today, <laughs> and that, and oh, I, I love that. It, do you do you enjoy at all that feeling of you can tell that you're scaring a child? <laughs> Um, but you do it anyway? Well, it all depends. It depends on the child, I think. I wouldn't do that to my two-year-old because I might pay for it. You know what I mean? You start scaring him and then all of a sudden he loses it, cries, 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 cries and cries, that's not cries, cool. Cries, cries. But, but that is different from how he acts already. How? <laughs> but with an older kid... Yeah, I think that's kind of fun. And, and again, you, even with the older kids, you got to pick the ones that can deal with it. You know what I mean? The ones that won't lose it. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of fun to, to scare kids. And I don't know that I've ever actually done it on purpose. But there was this time once when we were at... This is when my oldest son, who's now 14, was like two or, or one. I don't know how he was really young which was about a year and a half ago <laughs> yeah somehow i don't know I he was one of those so. strangely fast growing children but yeah he we we were just at walmart at halloween time you know looking at the costumes and stuff and he's sitting in the little basket the the thing there that you sit the little kids in and while he wasn't looking at me and i you know i didn't realize this was going to be a problem i just I grabbed one of those cheapy, crappy Walmart and Halloween masks off of the, the the peg, and I put it on, and he hadn't been looking at me, so he didn't see me do this. He had no idea that this was me anymore. Once I put the mask on, you know, all of a sudden, I'm something else, and I tapped him, and I went, hey, look. And he turned and looked at me, because he heard, you know, he recognized my voice, but then he turns and looks, and he sees the mask. And he basically crapped his pants. It's one of those, so you can tell when somebody's really scared. They do like a, ah, ah, you know, the arms go up and the, the, the gasping and all the crazy. And he go, he freaked out. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I pulled the mask off real quick so that the kid didn't just, you know, I don't know, go into convulsions or just lose it. But yeah, me and my wife laughed a lot about that. We were just like, holy crap, did you see how scared he was? <laughs> He was really scared. He did, he had no idea that that was you, obviously, and he was believing that that freaking mask was something. I don't even remember what the mask was. It was just one of those random, you know, weird-looking masks. It cheap, crappy ones. But the funny thing is, 14 years later, when my son, who is now two years old, 
last Halloween we went to the store and we were just looking at the costumes and the 10 year old girl thought oh yeah I'll grab this mask and put it on and she taps him and says hey look and he turned exact same thing happened he had not seen her put the mask on he had no idea that it was her anymore he turns sees her goes, ah! you know with the arms and the flailing and the whole bit and it was so hilarious <laughs> to both me and my wife because we're like oh my gosh this happened before Ex exactly the same way except for with the two other kids oh my god and it was it was really funny and luckily you know neither one of them freaked out didn't have one of those crazy dreams or or something like that because you know the the, the two-year-old that i scared the, the first time the one who's now 14 we used to have this stump in our backyard and it was just a tiny little stump, you know, it was basically like two inches off of the ground or something like that from this old tree that used to have been there. But ants had made basically this thing into their ant hill. And one time our son was just standing there on it uh, while we were, you know, doing stuff. And then he started freaking out and we looked and he was, they, he was crawling with ants. They'd crawled all over his legs and stuff like that. And we got the hose out and washed them all off of him and you know, beat him off of him and all that kind of stuff. But then that night, he wakes up in the middle of the night and he's like, ah, ants, ants, and he's screaming about ants. And he's, you know, we're like, hey, no, no, it's okay. We'll go back to sleep. And you could tell he wasn't even seeing us. He's like seeing ants mm -hmm. in his mind, crawling all over him again. And that's the kind of thing that I was, you know, I try to avoid when scaring children because that is not cool at two in the morning to have to deal with a kid who's freaking out because now they're having a dream of a scary mask guy chasing them so you know there's the there's the two sides you kind of have to balance but see my cousins were raised very differently than me their their father was actually mennonite and he had you know been raised that technology and all this stuff was really bad and he'd sort of broken away from that and come, you know, to live with the English. Technology and, is bad, okay. Okay. And, but, like, yeah, he and his wife totally agreed, you know, that all things Halloween were, were you know, really, really bad. And, and so his kids were super insulated from that. And whenever they'd come over, I, oh, I had such delight <laughs> in putting on one of my many masks. And yeah, it's funny because all of them. My many dogs. Yes, that's right. Uh, I am arranging them. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> uh, that they, they, they to this day, like all of them say, I, we were just terrified to go over to your house because we knew that you had masks, and even you know, you know, and that you might put them on and stuff. And I, I sort of remembered that a little bit embarrassedly, but mostly it was just I, I remembered how much joy I got. <laughs> From seeing their reaction, you know, these kids, that, you know, just, ah, they, they became like your two-year-old son, except for these were six-year-olds or ten-year-olds or whatever right. it was. They had just been so sheltered from all of this stuff that, uh, oh, it just, I, oh, I have power over others. <laughs> I had so much fun with that. and You had your chance to be a bully, finally, instead of being the, the bullied. Uh, and I don't know, that just, I think about that and the, it, it is fun to try and scare others and and you know if somebody if i wrote something and somebody was just like oh that was super super scary or whatever i would feel pride i would feel like oh i accomplished something as opposed to you know i i saw those pictures of you on the beach and i was really really afraid it is important that you were trying to scare someone usually i saw this this stat or whatever i'm just like the man of stats last show i pulled out some stat of how many billions is spent this time around the stat is in the state that we live in there are more haunted house attractions or whatever you want to call them the, the spook out the place you can go to where they put on like a, a haunted house kind of thing and you pay money to go in and etc every halloween there are more of those in our state per capita than anywhere else in the entire country for some reason, people really dig on that. I'm not sure why that would be. It's got to be just tradition, because when I was a little kid, there were always 
that was a big deal and people would bring those great big searchlights that I mean I associate with Batman now but <laughs> but used to be associated with like oh there's a car lot sale or whatever and they turn on the searchlights and if you wanted to go to one of these haunted houses you'd just follow those lights and all that and there would always be these things and I, and I know that it makes a great deal of money but I remember I would talk to like my cousins from California or the ones from Nevada or whatever and say hey uh, we're going to go do this and they'd be like do what you have, you have what <laughs> And it's just, there weren't those things for them. Now, now I know that they're everywhere. But back then, it was just kind of a unique thing. And uh, the closest one to where we lived, down in our little village, was, a, it actually kind of has an amusing background to it. Um, the state mental hospital is in this, uh, is you know, county seat or whatever you want to call it. And you could drive up there about 40 miles and the the, the mental hospital would put on a haunted house every Halloween, just right there behind the, the, the grounds of the hospital. And we would go because it was, you know, the closest one. You could go, you could travel for over an hour if you wanted to, you know, go up to the big city. But you could go to this one if you wanted to. And uh, the, just the knowledge that it was run by by the mental hospital was, was chilling because you're like, well, does it have people in it? And what they would do is if there were, you know, the patients... The ones that were well behaved or whatever, they would offer this as like a goal for them, as a carrot. You know, it's like as, if you take your medication and you do whatever you're supposed to do, you will be allowed to participate in this, you know, in October. If you stop molesting children long enough, you will be given a chance this one night to get as many children as you want. Okay, but it wasn't just this one <laughs> night. It would be like the three weeks leading up to Halloween or whatever. And, and see, they would always tell us, you know, hey, there are supervisors here, there are orderlies and all that stuff that are, are here to make sure that everybody is safe and, and you know, none of the, like, violent cases or seriously disturbed people are participating in this haunted house thing. Except for Mr. Lecter here, but he's been good for a long time. I don't know, it's funny, I guess it's, it's 2014, so we're so far in the future from what you're talking about that attitudes about things have changed so much, but I I can't believe they did a freaking haunted house attraction for people to go at the freaking mental hospital. And I think that was part of the draw, <laughs> is people would come from miles and miles away because there are crazy people that are involved in this. It's just so, so unbelievably insensitive. <laughs> or, or I'm not sure what. Well, it I, just cracks me I up. I think you've got a point because they, they don't do it anymore. Uh-huh. And I, I, I it's surprise, probably been, surprise. It's probably been twenty years or more since they did it. Um, you know, now sometimes they'll like put on a play in that area on Halloween night, but it's none of the people. <laughs> One flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> that, that's that's right. <laughs> none of the people are actually, you know, patients or or related to it. It's just tradition for people that are older remember that this used to be a scary place, and 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 then, so they'll do a haunted house. No, so they'll do a, a scary play there. But, um, Is that where you went that one time and saw uh, Barber of Seville? What's the demon barber? It is. What, yeah. What's we, the we, name we of it? We saw Sweeney Todd there Sweeney the very first time. And it was before the movie had come out and all that. And I was just like, I was so delighted by this music and that they would make a, a play about this. And I had taken my niece, who was probably nine at the time or whatever. And, and she still remembers it. She still talks endlessly about how we went and saw Sweeney Todd. It was a really cool experience i was first introduced to sweeney todd by way of the jersey girl movie where they wanted to go see cats but they couldn't get in and so they went to that and it became their thing and everybody else is like what the hell is this <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised you saw jersey girl you were the only one but yeah that, i think that was my first introduction too I, I i had no idea what it was and until i saw that but this was something i so looked forward to every year is to go up to these haunted houses and like youth groups or whatever, we would go up in a in a big group, and I'd just oh be so excited. But but it, it wasn't everyone that would felt this way, you know what I mean? There were there were other people that they did not enjoy this, and it's like oh shoot, well, you know I'm just going to stay home or whatever. But I remember one year we all went, and Chris Davis, he was probably twelve or something like that at the time, same age as me. He he just started to freak out. We were in the line; we hadn't even gotten into the haunted house yet. And he just started to shriek, not just, but going, ah! <laughs> like a, like a 
five-year-old with a skinned <laughs> knee or whatever, just like unabashedly, unashamedly just bawling. He wasn't crying. He was bawling. Oh, my God. You understand? And I, and I, I remember I was like 12 years old, and I was like, what a fucking pussy, man. <laughs> and... Uh, I, I, I have to. That was before I, you even knew what those words meant. I lost a little bit of respect for him in doing that because she's just like, Aah! and I. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to guarantee not to make that noise again tonight. But uh, liar, not every liar, <laughs> not get back, witch. Not everybody enjoys being scared. I know that, and I think we discussed this last time. Today, they probably wouldn't do that. They wouldn't make people go there. And we, you know, we drove all this way, Chris. You're going to go in and, and all that. But I, it reminds me, you know, my niece is, is 13 now. And she was telling me that there's a haunted house where, oh, okay. Well, sorry. Let me give you a little bit of background. When we were kids, the, the people in these haunted houses would find the person that was the most scared or that looked like they'd be the most fun. And they'd make a beeline for that person. You know what I mean? They could sense fear. They could sense vulnerability. Like Whether it was uh-huh. this girl that was going to scream a lot or whether it was somebody who was making a sound somewhat reminiscent to... <laughs> they were just like, oh, look. They, they were basically just me, ten, 10 years older. And they're just like, oh, wow, that's, look at that's that. That's the guy. Get, we're going to get him. And, and they would... Mark. They would terrify people and they, like, wouldn't let him go through and they, you know trap them against the wall and, you know, fondle. I'm sure there was a little bit of that going on. But that sort of stuff stopped flying like in the 90s. Right. And suddenly all that stuff was put, put, they put an end to it. And and, and it might have, it wasn't probably because of a lawsuit, but it was probably fear that there would someday be a lawsuit. And suddenly they put up like signs and stuff and, or, you know, none of the participants are allowed to touch the guests or the, you know, the, the observe, whatever you want to call it, touch the nubile young things that are walking <laughs> through the haunted house. Uh, you know, it's like, be, be at peace, my brother. Nobody <laughs> will harm you or is allowed to touch you. And if somebody does touch you, report that bastard it, immediately. Yeah. It's, it's uh, name names. Anyhow, my niece was telling me that there's one that just opened up and you can elect whether you will allow them to touch you or not. And if you would like them to touch you, there's a glow-in-the-dark or light-up necklace that you wear. You pay the same amount, but you wear this necklace, and it tells the monsters, it's okay if you touch me. And I was just like, you are freaking kidding me. Really? The uh, red necklace says, it's okay if you touch me. The right. blue necklace, it's okay if you lick me, right? <laughs> Okay, exactly. That's what I was thinking. I was just like, well, and I asked my niece, I was like, well, if we went to one of these, would you wear the the necklace? Or And she's like, yeah, of course I would. And I was just like, uh-oh. She's 13. This is how it begins. <laughs> but what I remember being like 18 or something like that. See, the, 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 the fun of going to these once you became like a teenager or whatever was going with a girl. And hopefully the girl would grab onto you or, well, much more likely she would grab onto your friend. But she would be afraid and say, oh, please Much more me. likely she'd grab onto me, not to you. That, that is very true, sadly. <laughs> you were a stranger. You hadn't grown up in the same town as as the girl like I had. And yet still instinctively it's just like this guy can protect. Oh, hey, feel those arms. Wow. You know, hey, can... <laughs> And yeah, you just walked back into the parking lot. You didn't go farther into the haunted house. I, I assume that you were comforting her, but uh, that, that that the 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 idea of a girl, you know, grabbing onto you and you being scared, and you're not really scared, but it's a it's a, again, it's it's a, just an opportunity to let it all hang out, was very attractive to me. Whoa, letting it hang out with the girl. Hold on a minute. Um, well, I've read yeah. these things. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. I was talking with my wife about that the other day. Here's a crazy thing. In the tiny little town that I... Squamish, Ontario. Yes, that I live in now. Oh, where you live. um, Not where she lives. Yeah, not where she came from. In our tiny little town, there is a haunted house place. Somebody right near the gas station, they found this like empty little bit of land. And they put up like some chain link fence and they, they built... I think they took a bunch of pallets 
and they like nailed them together to kind of make them into walls and there's like little tents and you kind of go through in a little maze through it it's super small it's like the size of, of like the footprint of it is like the same as my house's footprint but it's not two stories or anything it's just this little place but they have one in our town and i was actually talking to my wife about it she's just like i don't know if i could go to one of those kind of places you know i think she might be the one you know what i mean <laughs> people she would walk in there and people like oh it's her she's the one <laughs> because she has a she freaks out just at the idea of going and i was <laughs> I was saying to her that I may, you know, see if there's a time that I can take, like, the kids over to it or something like that. And we can go to the, uh, our little bitty, I think it's called the Dollhouse. Oh, really? I like that. Or the Dollhouse Haunt, I think maybe the full oh, name. <laughs> but, um. Well, if you go to that, we got to do an episode about it. <laughs> I, I, that sounds really interesting. Well, maybe that will be talk... what we talk about next 13 nights. Okay, if you remember. <laughs> But just that that stuff is fun. And, and yeah, the point I guess I was going to make is uh, the only fun of it once I reached adulthood or semi-adulthood was being with somebody else who was scared because I was no longer scared. Right. Even if there's, you know, some dude with a Tor Johnson mask and a leaf blower coming at you, <laughs> once you knew they can't really touch you and all that stuff, I, I, I think that harmed it, that whole, hey, folks, please do not be afraid when you go into this place that's supposed to make you afraid, they are not going to, to harm you in any way. Please do not suspend your disbelief yes. <laughs> when walking through here. Keep your disbelief firmly in place. This was in Sacramento, not uh, in, the, in the state that has more haunted houses per capita than anywhere else. But when I was growing up, I was in a drama class. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what kind of class? I was in a drama class. Oh, okay. Sorry, I <laughs> didn't know what you were saying. And uh, at one of the things that we had, I can't remember if we had to do it or if it was extra credit or something. But I want to say we had to do this. It was like part of our grade, we had to go to the haunted house in the area. It was actually like just almost right across the street from the high school, and we were supposed to go there and volunteer and be one of the the scarers. I, I I was James P. Sullivan for the night. Um, You're always James P. Sullivan, actually. <laughs> and uh, it was unfortunate. But basically, I went there with my other friends who were also in the class. And immediately, for some reason, they're like, oh, you guys are bastards. We're going to divide you guys. So they divided all of us up. They're like, oh, you go over here as far away from your friend as you can possibly be. You will stay here and you you will go over there. And so we didn't get to do this with people that we wanted to be with. Instead, I was with a bunch of strangers that I didn't know. And uh, I was in this little, like, hallway where they would bring people through. And there was a bunch of doors that had, like, curtains just hanging. You know, it was all, like, assembled. You know, they throw it up in, like, a, a half hour or whatever. So they're just, like, these little fakey curtains that were hanging down. And I was in kind of a little room behind it. And I was supposed to jump out. When people would go by and scare them. And I would do it at first. I was doing it and trying to scare. I mean, I wasn't really trying to scare, but I would do it. And I was just like, Aah! or whatever. And people but you would get weren't scared. there of your own volition. You were being forced. Right. I was forced to be there. And then on top of that, I was split up from my friends. So I had I was getting no enjoyment out of this. There was one of those people, though, that came through. I thought it was pretty funny. The The one that person that would freak out over everything and yeah this girl was coming through and she was just she was losing it before anybody jumped out i remember just kind of like peeking out and seeing oh here we come i hope nobody scares us or whatever the guide's saying as we're walking through and this woman had you know there was already like a piss running down her leg and she was in that state that I was talking about my son was in when he turned and saw me. She had arms up and flailing. And, <laughs> and she's, you know, hyperventilating and freaking out before. Still we're... more in control than Chris Davis. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> before we'd even jumped out. And so, yeah, I mean, there there are those people. I, I think I jumped out when she came by and kind of, Rah! but I didn't, like, do too much because she was already gone. Um... 
after a while though, I just got sick and tired of it. I was just like, how long am I going to be here? And this sucks so bad. And I was just sitting down doing nothing. And, uh, yeah, it gets to the point where the guy like comes through. He's like, I hope nobody jumps out and scares us. And they walk through. Wait, wait, he would say that every time he went through? He would say something like that. And yeah, he walks through and walks, yeah, I hope, boy, I sure hope. And, uh, okay. And he walked through and on past, nobody jumped out to scare these people. And yeah, afterwards he comes by and he's like, hey, I just want to tell you, you guys are doing a really shitty job. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just like, yeah, well, F you. <laughs> so that was my experience with a haunted house. It's not uh, always a joy to scare people, apparently. Sometimes, yeah, it can be a, it can be a grind. It can be like anything. I guess anything can become a grind if, if you get the right circumstances. Even the most awesome job in the world becomes a grind after a while. You mean I have to make out with all these supermodels? <laughs> And be out in the Bahamas? The, the hand model that's supposed to hold the bare breasts in the picture is like, oh, come on. I gotta hold both breasts? Can I just rest this one hand? You know how hot the <laughs> perfect Caribbean sun is right now? I... <laughs> Anyhow, I, I, I hope you appreciate this rerun, which we have recorded for your listening pleasure. I think it's fun to be scared, and, and apparently it is fun to scare as well. Well, I, I think it's fun to scare. Just the one time it wasn't, but but it will be again. Yeah, at first we were walking in in slow motion, and there was the one nerdy guy that said, They're so cool! But yeah, after a while, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't awesome. But yeah, thanks for listening, everybody, to my... We, we end it with a crappy story each show, huh? That was a good story, man. First, it's uh, the story of how you went to the dance and it was not fun. And then it's how I went to the haunted house and it was not fun. What will be not fun tomorrow? Tune in and see, the folks. Holy show. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I'm Big Ankovich. I'm Rashad Field. Stay scared, kids. Good night. That gets my go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rish Outfield. <laughs>